Shalom, Rastafari, Assalamu alaikum, peace to the kings and the queens of the earth. I'm going to give blessings to everybody on this Friday. Um, I know it's been tough for some people and good for some people. Um, I like to keep my things private, but just sending some good vibes to everybody else, you know, in the midst of going through some things and yeah, just um, trying to figure out the direction I'm going to go into my, my life and just trying to figure out things and just thank you, thanking everybody for their support and their, their loving kindness, words, and their actions. I really appreciate it from family to friends. I love all y'all. Um, today, um, I want to go into what our anniversary just came out. Uh, I think it was yesterday, which was the George Floyd uh, anniversary. And I want to speak on that. I really kind of felt I needed to speak on what has happened since then. Um, George Floyd, basically the title of this one is George Floyd, what happens now? And I go back, um, yeah, three years ago, I remember every part of where I was at. It was, um, right in the beginning of the pandemic. We know I was actually located in Richmond Hill at the time and, um, really seeing what was going on and seeing it. I remember seeing it from the first time, watching it fully, watching the whole 10, 15 minute video um, <clears throat> and being just a, just extremely frustrated as to what would happen. Like, how could you not? Um, first of all, how are people are going to watch this? How, how is this legal? How is things going on? And, you know, what now? Because this has continued to happen up until then. And. I'm just going back at the time. It was. It, it just felt like you know, the world was somewhat closing in on on just people, right? You, know, you got a pandemic. You got, you know, it's as much. I can't stand like Trudeau, the prime minister up here, tried to say recently like he didn't force anybody to um, to take anything or do anything, which is it's like three years ago we weren't literally. You had cops <laughs> not allowing people to go to certain areas just to drive through that area. You had, you know, restrictions up the ass. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you were talking about. But basically, getting back to George Floyd, it felt like the whole world was closing in. You couldn't do anything, right? You could barely go to the grocery store. You couldn't really work. Um, at that time, you weren't going to the gym. Simple things that, that, that for me, like, I take, I guess I take, I haven't taken for granted, but it was just when they take your freedoms away, it's, it's, it's a really... Um, awakening situation. And I remember just being in the, in the area where it just felt like nothing, you know, it just felt weird, you know, <laughs> driving around. Um, yeah, it just felt very, very just the world was a different place. So this atten the attention on this was high because everybody was home. The entire world was home, right? Like the entire world was was literally restricted at their home. There wasn't too many places where they didn't have restrictions. And so we all get to see it and pay attention to it. Now, there are, are many George Floyd incidences that happen, um, tons of them that continue to happen um, all the time. You know what I mean? And some of them are caught on camera. Some of them are not. Um, this one was caught fully. And it felt it felt as if I knew that one or two things was going to happen. So when George Floyd happened, it just felt like everybody actually had now the time to protest, right? Um, they had the wherewithal. They had, you know, I, they, they, they kind of understood that, like, we outnumbered everybody. You're not going to arrest everybody. So the entire world kind of stood up. You know what I mean? It, it really felt like it started off with the States and then it, it felt like up next thing you know, you started seeing protests all across the, the world. And it was really weird because um, I think, I feel like it was just a call for people to protest about something, right? You're already restricting us and, and, and this is another problem that's happening. And the entire world stood up. It was really shocking to see. Um, and it felt good. I mean, I joined in um, protests out here in Canada, my, my, my good boys, they, they joined in and these are people who got a lot to lose. They joined in protests in Buffalo. They joined in protests in Atlanta. They joined in protests in Florida. They joined in protests in Texas. Um, you know, I had people at the time who were, who were protesting out there in Calgary. 
um, and BC and, and, and everything like that. And even, and even on the, the territories, uh, Ganawaki at the time started protesting. and they were protesting before even that, right. Um, uh, yeah, that, that that hits the heart. Tyanega, you know, and Unido, Shrigan. A lot of people, you saw the BLM bang and really, really come onto that side, right? And it had, a, it had a great movement, great people. You couldn't say anything else. You couldn't talk anything. You know, as much as people want to, you know, say stuff about the movement, it really kind of kicked off. But I knew in my heart that one or two things was going to happen. Either after the pandemic, and people would actually get back to their normal life, right? And get back to working and kind of all of a sudden, you know, quote unquote, have things to lose, so to speak. And then this incident happens again, what will happen? And just like I thought, I mean, I remember, I remember three years, um, <laughs> I remember three years ago, this happening, me getting in the front line, me, me banging that thing all summer, and then things continuing to happen. Um, you know, not guilty um, verdicts for cops that murdered people on camera was, was still happening. Us being killed was still happening. I was still having conversations with like BLM um, <clears throat> organizations, and we were hopping online because at the time, you know, Instagram Live went crazy. You know, these these live live interactions twitched from the pandemic. They went crazy because people were able to obviously stream from their phone and we had nothing else to do. I remember live was like TV at one point. I remember literally like my live. I look at I look at my Instagram. There'd be like seven people on live and most of them would be talking about good conversations like this. Right. They would talk about what we can do. And I've had numerous things that continue to happen and. I have to say that I'm somewhat disappointed in a lot of things. One is because what look where we have, look where we came from or look what has happened since um, three years ago. What has changed, right? What has, is there a drastic change in um, police officers uh, shooting black men unarmed? I know it's not, the numbers are still high. Is um, the way we protest and the way things are happening, is there a more of a um, motivation and is there more is there more power behind what we're saying now that we kind of showed the world that you know okay George Floyd was enough no it's not it's not um, unfortunately there's so many people as far as black people and people of color that have been killed by the police that we have now forgot some of the names right you know we forgot we forgot a lot of names there there's names that were brought up the Mike Browns and all this stuff the Trayvon Martins that were years ago before George Floyd and we have now forgotten about them because of the fact that it has happened so much we've also now forgot about and and we have less intensity in our protests and in our our call to you know to address injustice and our call to justice now that it feels like we're all back in at in the workforce or so we're back to normal life it feels like exactly how it was before George Floyd. It felt like literally the society just needed something to do and needed needed something to get mad at. It's almost like you ever, you know, it's almost like you you meet that person who's going through a lot of stuff and they're looking for something to get mad at. And then something that goes wrong, they just put all of a sudden they put all this passion into it. And you wanna look back and like, why are you so why are you so passionate about this all of a sudden? And you can kind of tell that they just take they're just taking out whatever they want on this energy and I felt that's what was happening more because of COVID and because of this, I felt like that was happening way more um, during that time. And now that things are back again, nor status quo and normal, what are we doing? If someone would, if, if someone gets, you know, killed and shot by a police, it, it is what it is at this point, right? Like it's going if it happens, it happens. And what's the protest going to be? You know what I mean? How is the protest going to be even addressed? Will it be addressed in any in any form that is kind of how, like how it was before George Floyd? And I honestly don't think it will. I honestly don't, you know, I didn't think it would. I thought that maybe we had a chance. Like now we can't look back. I've made posts about it. Like, okay, you know, we, we're at this level with the protest. We're at this level with the movement. We're at this level with action. How can we continue to, to push forward? And unfortunately, I see the same routine. I see the same things that are happening 
We get our we get our black little pastor leader comes in there, justice for this person. They, they talk, they speak, they demand certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the next incident happens. So it's kind of like it's kind of tough for me because I am also under that that notion that I'm tired of protesting because clearly that doesn't doesn't do too much. We need to protest. We need to have our our, our voices heard all the time. We need to obviously have you know, things, things that we are passionate about addressed. You know what I mean? However, it is, it is a situation where it clearly, because we now have things to do that our lives, you know, our protest isn't as strong as it used to be. And unfortunately for George Floyd, it feels like he, you know, he didn't die for nothing. You know, he will forever be remembered. Um, but, the actions that happened from him, there was really no recoil, right? There's no like, okay, because George Floyd, now we have a certain law, da 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 Nothing's really changing. And so what are we really doing as a society? What are we doing as, as black people, as black liberators? What are we doing? And my conclusion to end this, what is to the, like, what, what should we do? We should hit him with the pockets. Financially, the financial protest is the biggest thing. Financial protest really hits people. They don't care about you marching. They don't care about you burning your own places. They don't care about you even like running up on police officers. You just get charged. That's not costing them money. They're going to wake up the next day. It's going to be over and they're going to go to work. But on a side note, I mean, I'm not trying to say what's this is right or wrong, but I already did a, but, a, a, a podcast about Bud Light and what they did and how regardless of what you feel, you need to know your audience and you made a decision and you lost billions of dollars. Targets actually happening. It's happening right now, too. And people will literally just there's your stock drops. You lose billions of dollars. You see how this goes. Right. You see how we, maybe we can start really making our voices heard through our financial strength. Black people spend almost a trillion dollars on frivolous money a year, which means money that does not come back to the community. We do not invest in ourselves enough. We don't have our own banks enough. We don't have our own, you know, we don't have, we really have much of ourselves to then implement something to take out. But what we could do if we were unified is the next thing that has, say, say this happens in a specific state. All those athletes, actors, lawyers, doctors, whoever the hell is there and, and who's in a black position of power should step back. And say, okay, well, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna shut your state down as far as black dollars until we get some justice. Watch how quick things happen. Watch how quick things happen. And and that's just what I've been talking about the long time. It, it, that's the only reason that gets their attention. They don't care about the, the burning of the of the houses and stuff like that or, or the buildings of your own neighborhood. But they do care when you take money out of their pocket. They do care when the stocks happen. They do care when you take their little freedom away. Which is their which is their financial freedom. So we need to really be more strategic of of, of this. That's my thing. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I see it, and I just see that the protest and the marching, they they know we're gonna do it. They line up, they put the gates out there, they get the police ready, and they let us. They make sure we don't burn too much stuff, and the next day nothing gets done. All right? But could you imagine financially killing them? Stocks going down. Things happening, big stars saying we're not playing, we're not doing things in this area because of the injustice that's happening in this situation. Imagine that. So, I didn't want to talk too long about it. I'm a little on edge this morning. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot lot of personal things that are happening, but um, I love all y'all. I appreciate appreciate you for listening. And my thing is just keep on protesting, keep on doing this, but also be strategic in what you want to do. You know, get together and, and, you know, when you stop consuming specific things on people, guess what? You know what I mean? <laughs> they, they get their, that, that gets their attention much faster. So rest in power, George Floyd. But he should not be, you know, not remembered or forgotten. Just because now we're back in our jobs and, you know, now we don't, the government's not forcing us to stay home. You should still be out in these streets banging for any kind of injustice for anybody. Rest in power, George Floyd. You guys have a good weekend.